Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Whip Air has a unique ADSB solution, Yonkers, New York bans heliports, Send Solutions makes texting from the air easier. I'm Brie Cross, it's July 5th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Trying to establish the best way to comply with the 2020 ADSB out requirement can be a hassle. Now, Whip Air has announced the establishment of a program designed to take the hassle out of ADSB compliance for general aviation aircraft owners and operators. The program features a quoting process with a single questionnaire. Interested owners and operators need only fill out a form on the Whip Air website at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh or other events. Based on the information submitted, Whip Air's avionics staff will generate three quotes for each aircraft, encompassing a range of compliance and functionality options. Owners and operators may then select and reserve an installation slot. Shop slots are now available from August of this year through December 2018 in Whip Air South St. Paul, Minnesota and Leesburg, Florida locations. Exact installation times may vary based upon equipment selected, but most general aviation aircraft can expect to become ADSB compliant in one to two weeks. Whip Air says they have relationships with most major avionics manufacturers. Local municipalities have little to say about aircraft operations overhead because the FAA owns the airspace. However, the City Council in Yonkers, New York, found a way to prevent multiple helicopter flights from their community to and from the Statue of Liberty by voting to ban heliports in the community. According to the Journal News, in a unanimous 7-0 vote, the Council voted to ban the construction of a heliport on property located in an industrial zone. The vote was directly aimed at preventing helicopter flight services from establishing a helicopter tourism company that had proposed operating three to five flights per hour between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. to the Statue of Liberty. A cable news channel reports that the council did leave open the possibility of a heliport being allowed by special exemption for medical emergency services or if a large company needing helicopter transportation were to move into the city. After the break, it's all about staying connected. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Being connected seems to drive everything today and aviation is becoming more connected as the FAA has granted a supplemental type certificate for the installation of SIN Solutions AirTex passenger Iridium texting systems on a Cessna Citation 10. AirTex allows 16 passengers the ability to send and receive SMS messages as well as emojis whether in flight or on the ground anywhere in the world for essentially 5 cents a message. Using the Iridium satellite network, this system allows connectivity through a cell phone while in the airplane. The passengers open a free application loaded on their phone, giving them access to AirText. The hardware consists of a small paperback size box weighing 1.1 pounds that is installed on the airplane and connects to the aircraft's existing Iridium phone antenna. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. An aviation tradition of summer in the northwest U.S. is the Arlington Fly-In being held this year, July 7th through the 9th. This takes place in Arlington, Washington, and is referred to as a country fair with wings. There will be lots to see and do at this must-see aviation event. There are numerous educational seminars every day, and the air show is one of the best in the regions. And now we head back to the East Coast for the National Warplane Museum Air Show being held in Geneseo, New York, July 8th through the 10th. They'll have aerial warbird demonstrations by members of the National Warplane Museum and others. There will be aerobatic performances, flybys, reenactment camps, a veterans victory dance, and lots for the kids to do. They call it the greatest show on turf. 
Now we'll jump the pond to Gloucestershire in the UK. July 8th through the 10th are the dates for the Air Tattoo, one of the UK's premier outdoor events being held at RAF Fanford with an extravaganza of entertainment for all the family. Alongside the thrilling flying action, visitors will be treated to non-stop entertainment on the ground. So whether a wide-eyed first-timer or a seasoned airshow veteran, they say the experience is breathtaking. Heading back to the U.S., we now go to Duluth, Minnesota, where we find the Duluth Air and Aviation Expo being held July 9th and 10th. This year, the show features the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, along with top-notch civilian performers and a rare de Havilland vampire fighter. Bring earplugs because there will also be an AV-8 Harrier demonstration. This is a major event that celebrates aviation on all levels. And of course, EAA AirVenture 2016 is just around the corner. So if you want the best coverage ever, be sure to tune in to Aero News and Airborne Unlimited as we bring the AirVenture excitement to you. After these messages, Hartzell Propeller gets involved at AirVenture. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Hartzell Propeller is co-sponsoring a wide range of aerobatic flight exhibitions during EAA AirVenture 2016. The EAA Pilot Proficiency Center that provides pilot skill building resources is also co-sponsored by Hartzell Propeller. The center will feature tech talks and flight simulator scenarios. GoGo Business Aviation has expanded its coverage on the eastern seaboard of North America and in central Canada. This provides approximately one hour of additional air-to-ground in-flight connectivity in both locations for business aircraft. A teenager who made bomb threats against Los Angeles International Airport is facing additional charges that have postponed his sentencing hearing. He admitted to making a bomb threat on January 8th, but is denying charges of disorderly conduct and using a computer to make a threat. Catherine Purwin, jet and helicopter pilot, has assumed the role of CEO of Helinet Aviation Services. Helinet is an international provider of corporate travel, emergency medical service, electronic news gathering, motion picture, television and commercial production services since 1987. People living on a transient boat in the Willamette River in Portland, Oregon, began shooting at a UAV flying over their boat. They missed and the operator, who goes by the moniker of Drone Man, posted the video on YouTube. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. A restored and modified Measure Schmidt BF 109 G12 with two seats has been rolled out at Hangar 10 on the Baltic tourist destination island of Eustem. The aircraft began life as a post war Spanish built BF 109 that served with the Spanish Air Force. Warbird News reports that the aircraft made an appearance in the movie Battle of Britain and was later shipped to the United States, where it became a part of the commemorative Air Force. It suffered a ground loop in 1976 and remained in storage until being sold about 10 years later. It flew again in the year 2000 and then moved through various owners. It was damaged again in 2013 and was acquired by the Hangar 10 Air Fighter Academy. The first engine runs are now complete and the airplane is expected to fly again in the near future. It will be used to train pilots and give flight experiences as part of the Air Fighter Academy fleet. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network. 
the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.